architecture um, and has a lot of, I think, nice philosophies on energy saving, energy friendliness, uh, and also the use of material and biodiversity. <coughs> Mr. Town um, please provide us and tell us something more about the exciting venue we are in now. Um, at the end, we have one or two questions maybe for Thomas Rao because he has to leave in um, briefly after his presentation. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Yeah? Uh -huh. Okay. Okay, okay. So you are in love? You're not really smiling. If you're in love, you really have to smile. Um, what I heard that, that you're people from different nationalities, from Good Morgen, Denmark, Bonjour, Frankreich, Good Morgen, Deutschland, Good Morgen, Nederland. I, um, what I heard, I have to do it in English. So, we were going in English. I'm, I'm asked to tell you something over the tail building, and I decided not to do it. <clears throat> um, because you are in love. And, and I think you're in love with someone who doesn't exist. Or maybe it's not, he's not interesting at all. So, I, take tw I have 20 minutes, so you really have to listen. So this is a good opportunity for me to tell you something which you, which you maybe say, yeah, what's this? So we are here for the energy and this guy is telling something completely different. But anyhow, so you have some workshops so you can think about it. Because I think sustainability is over. There's no reason to think anymore over sustainability. It's more about over vitality. Because we are doing a lot of very strange things just to get the labels and to get the points, to get the certification. And then we call it, we have a sustainable building. But it's not about that. So, I want to start with someone who also was in love, but with something completely different. And he really, he really had a vision. So, let's listen to that man. something not because it's easy. We do something because it's difficult, because it's hard. We do something over seven years. This is our vision and because we want to be on the moon over seven years, that means we have to act today in a different way. So the acting from today is guided by the future and not guided by the past. This is a very big difference. And the Russians, they heard it, they were very afraid, so they were asking, so who wants to go, who wants to go to space? No one wants to go, they, they sent the dog. But at least the Americans, they sent some people, and they go up and they make this photo. This is the first photo which is done by a human being from the Earth. And it's an illegal photo, because it, he was not allowed, Frank was not allowed to look out of that window, he should, allow, he should look out of the other window, so, but he just saw the earth and said, oh, wait, just give me the camera and that makes a picture. Photo. And you see, the traffic jam in Netherlands is now really over. 
you see the stars in Appledore, you can see it. You see exactly where the Christians are, where are living. The Greeks were here, the Egyptians were here, the Romans were here, and you are here. We are here. And if there's a conference over, let me say, 80 years, I'm sure you have space in your agenda. I'm com very sure. But you won't come because you are dead. And I will be dead too. That means we know that we are guests. We are on vacation. So we shouldn't be in love with energy neutral. We should be in love with a planet. Because this is a very vulnerable being. And that's it. So we have to handle that planet. And that's the question. How do we want to handle the planet in the future? How do we want to handle the planet who makes life possible? Who makes possible that you are here? That I am here? So he's very vulnerable. And the photo is done on a very special evening. It was, it was Christmas night, 1968, half past five. That was the first illegal photo from the planet. And I show you this photo because this photo is the starting point for the environmental movement at all. It didn't start in Denmark or in France or in Belgium or Germany or Holland, no. It started in the States because everybody was realizing how vulnerable this being is. We have to take care of the being. And the main thing is you don't see any border. All borders we have right now, all those borders are done by the human being. And maybe that's one of the problems. So, that's why we call it one planet architecture. Not because the footprint, I will talk about that later. It doesn't matter how big your footprint is, I don't care. Don't think about three times or five times Earth or seven times. It doesn't matter. It's about the attitude. The attitude we have towards everything what makes life possible. So, that's why, that's why I think it's much more important to think about vitality. And of course you're here, so you see, this is where we stay. We stay on a volcano and under an atomic reactor. And this reactor is working now for around about three and a half million years. And we just found, and we know he will do it for some more years. So we can be very sure it's still working in the next year. Or we can say there is no energy problem. There is no energy problem at all. We just have an energy demand. But we, but we are serving the demand with something where we can create a problem. With some resources, like oil or whatever, with ended resources. And if you create a problem, you earn money. So it's a perfect business model to say we have an energy problem. So there's no energy problem at all. I'm here not to save energy. I'm not, I'm not living to save energy. I'm not, to, I'm not staying in my house to save I like to use energy. That's very good. No problem. The matter is what kind of value are we creating if we're using energy? But what is then the real problem? The real problem are the resources. It's the material. So we see the copper will be over in 60 years. There will be no copper anymore. I talked to a scientist. He said, we don't have the material to make 20 million electrical cars. We don't have the material. We have them, but we don't know where. It's somewhere. So this is the first time in human history that we don't have the material to make the next step to make the next step of development. <laughs> and this is really strange. It was in the news some weeks ago. There was a report that the Americans found some very interesting resources in Afghanistan because they're looking for that since seven years. I didn't know. I thought the reason that they're in Afghanistan is completely different. So why are, why are they looking for seven years for material in, Af in Afghanistan. And I think this is the future. The future will be, for me, that we could say 